Hey, hey, thank you for coming back. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I am Leah Keys9 and I blog and create YouTube videos on unboxings, relationship tips, and general vlogs. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about something that was requested through my Instagram stories, and that is my personal experience with being international. So like what my experience was coming from Canada to the US. So I'm gonna structure this video kind of like based on like my history, how I got here, and then how I feel about it now. So basically, I was born in Canada. I was born in a town. It was just like an hour or two away from downtown Toronto. I lived there with my mom and dad. I was the first kid. And I was there for about nine or so years before we first moved to California. When we first moved to California, we moved to the Bay. Well, not like the Bay Bay, but it was NorCal area. Okay, don't come at me. I'm sorry, I don't know what's not from the Bay. But we moved to a small town in Pleasanton. And after Pleasanton, we moved back to Burlington when I was still in fourth grade, I believe. After fourth grade, I spent fifth grade back in Burlington. And then after fifth grade, I moved back to NorCal for middle school. And I stayed there in that middle school and high school until about sophomore year. I was in a place called Tracy. And then from Tracy, I moved to SoCal, to Orange County. And I stayed in Orange County for two years before I moved up back to NorCal to Santa Cruz to start college. So knowing that basically most of my childhood, all of my childhood was in Toronto and most of my adulthood was in California. Actually, right before college, I had spent exactly eight years in each place. So I had like an equal amount of time in each country. I'm sure most of you guys uh, clicked on this video to see the differences between Canada and America. And I'll do a whole separate video about that if you want to, but I'll keep it really brief here. As a black girl in America, it's super, super, super different in my opinion. It's a very different experience being black in America versus being black in Canada as far as I'm concerned. Yes, there's a lot of the same things. Canada isn't like heaven or anything, but there definitely is something different about even the fact that when you're in America, you're considered African-American. Whereas in Canada, we don't have like an African-Canadian, you're just black or you're whatever. Like there's no Chinese-Canadian, you're just Chinese. Like it doesn't matter what your citizenship status is really. No one will call you by that. Like you're what your ethnicity is or you're what you want to be kind of like here. It's a little bit different. Like you have to be something American. American, if that makes sense. My mom always told me that like America is a melting pot where people from different countries come over here and everyone kind of melts and assimilates into the American culture. Whereas Canada is a mosaic where people from different countries come all over the place, but we fit into each other and we don't have to assimilate into being Canadian. We kind of make Canada, Canada. And in saying that, I'm gonna move on to my next topic, which is there is a huge multicultural presence in Toronto. Now, I only was there for, I guess, a short amount of time as a kid, so I guess I don't really know the full extent to which how multicultural it is. But from what I do know, I have not found anything like it in America, and that's even when I went to visit New York. Like, I haven't found anything that gives me the same vibe as Toronto here. Yes, I know you can go to San Francisco and see, like, you know, there's Chinatown, and then there's like these little different places, and you can see different cultures and people like doing their thing and vibing, but like, it's all very like Americanized and like in the same way whereas when you're in Toronto like it's almost like people bring their own flavor to it like as you guys know Drake who's from Toronto like thinks he's Caribbean or something but that's actually understandable because a lot of Toronto culture is Caribbean culture there's a very strong community of Caribbean people Caribbean immigrants that go to Toronto that being said a lot of the things that Caribbean people create or that we celebrate or something gets adapted by Toronto as a whole and becomes Torontonian slang or Toronto just things that we do like things like that wasn't that's a Caribbean thing like, but it's also a Toronto thing now too so that being said it makes sense why Drake is like that but at the same time it's like okay so I myself was born in Canada so I'm not nationally Caribbean I'm ethnically Caribbean and I understand that that's different from say my grandparents who were born in Barbados and born in Jamaica I have a very specific and unique experience being Caribbean in, in Canada because my grandmother was actually part of a very big organization that helped to organize Caribbean people meeting each other in Toronto so everyone I met was of Caribbean descent or was Caribbean themselves, which made me feel a lot more like I was surrounded by family all the time. Everyone I knew was part of my extended family. And I feel like that is the case for a lot of black families in the US as well. But I've also realized that the US gatekeeps a lot of what they deem as like 
Black history and Black knowledge and Blackness as a whole. I remember when I first came to America, I was of course teased and made fun of because I wasn't American, but I also wasn't accepted by the Black community here because I just wasn't seen as Black. Most of the Black people that I met didn't even actually realize that there were Black people in Canada. And that makes no sense to me considering like y'all learn that the slaves run up to Canada because it's abolished up there first. So I don't know how that makes any sense, but we're gonna move on. That sense of gatekeeping didn't really exist back when I went to school in Canada, um, but it was really, really prevalent in America. So I'm not really sure why that is, but that's something that I felt really strongly. And that's something that my sisters feel very strongly as well. There's always gonna be the presence of like a black card or um, reasons for other black communities to try to make themselves feel more part of the community if they otherwise don't feel like they're part of the community. But I do wanna say that like in America, it's very, very prevalent. Whereas back when I was in Toronto, it wasn't really prevalent at all. So schooling differences. So the biggest thing as far as school was America focuses on itself a lot. Like there's so much stuff in the curriculum, like focus so on America like you only learn about other countries in American school systems if it has to do with America we learn so much about Egypt and China and the Silk Road and everything but like what about other colonies and other places like there's so many other places on this earth that we don't actually talk about like ever in the American school system and that's because it has nothing to do with America like it's terrible to know that American school systems only really talk about Japan when it has to do with war and that's terrible. I wasn't in the Canadian school system for super, super long, so I can't really comment on this. But for the time that I was in the Canadian school system, we barely even talked about Canada. Most of our learning was about other countries and America. And some of Canada was actually gonna come on later, but we learned more about indigenous Canadians and other countries before we really focused on ourselves. And I think that that kind of like builds the stereotype that a lot of people have towards Americans, which is that they're self-centered, which isn't their fault. It's just how their school system teaches them. So that was one thing that was like super, super prevalent. There's also a lot of things that I feel like Canadian students learn about and they assume that other schools in America just learn about them too because Canada and America are so similar. But when you go to America, like nobody knows these things. I'm not gonna like sit here and like drop like history facts on y'all, but like there's a few things that I'm sure Canadians will like know what I'm talking about. And it's like, you would think that everyone would know these things and like no American like knows them because it wasn't taught to them. And that's just like blows my mind every time I talk about something with my boyfriend who is American and like he's never heard of some of these topics. And it's like, yo, I said, do this for like half my life. <laughs> Another huge difference between America and Canada are the universities. Now in Canada, universities and colleges are two completely different things. One is seen as more of like a trade school type thing, a two year type thing, and the university is more of a theoretical four year type thing. And in America, it's all the same stuff. It's all higher education and they're used interchangeably. And that confused the absolute like, crap out of me and my parents because when we were looking at colleges and universities, we would see like Harvard University, then we would see like Harvard College and we would think they're two different places and I think they actually are. So I'm still kind of confused about that. But like the fact that Americans make them interchangeable confuses Canadians so much sometimes because they have two very separate and very different meanings and uses in Canada. So. I will include a bunch of videos in this video about my trips back to Toronto. Every time I go there, y'all, let me just tell you, I have lost, like, my heart stays in Toronto. Like, it's just, oh, I love it so much. I wanna go back, and even when I was in New York, I didn't, like, people always compare Toronto and New York, and New York is great as well, but there's something, something different about Toronto. I don't know if it's because I'm ethnically Caribbean that I feel that sense of home there, but that's something I haven't been able to be seen replicated in the States. If anywhere, I'd probably assume it'd be in Miami, since there's a very high population of Caribbean people in Miami as well. But I've never been to Miami, so I have no clue. Yeah, so that is a super quick overview of my experience moving internationally. Honestly, it was kind of, it was awesome, but like traumatizing at the same time. Of course, when you're a kid, you want to go see California. California's everywhere on TV. But once you're there, you're like, oh my gosh, this is really different <laughs> than I thought it was gonna be. But in the end, you know, I don't regret it. I love that I'm here. And I also love that I'm from there. So if you wanna see more information and more content about my life in Toronto or my experience being international or any of that type of stuff, just let me know, hit me up with a comment or hit me up on Instagram. Also check out my blog I recently made, I'm super proud of it. And you'll probably find some information about my experience on my blog there as well. So go ahead and check that out. But thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'll see you guys all next time. Bye. <laughs> Look at the thing that she
she didn't believe she was playing. She thought she was lip syncing. <laughs> Rude. <laughs>